how are you all today we are going to speak about yoga sun yoga and we are going to learn a single type of yoga which if you do it regularly then there is no need for you to do any other sort of yoga and the benefits will be outstanding you can't even get uh, even if you do all other types of yoga daily you can never get even one thousandth of what we are going to get from the kind of yoga sun that we are going to do today uh, before that we should know what yoga means it is also called yoga asana in hindi so what does it mean because uh, throughout the world we have been seeing people doing different types of yoga with the different poses um, they don't look alike in india it's uh, somewhat different even within india in the southern part it's entirely different it changes from state to state and also um, if you take um, countries other than india again it varies in china it's different in america it's different but no matter where it is performed they all know that it originated in india and they somehow um, attach hinduism to yoga uh, which is the reason uh, other religions like christianity and uh, Muslim they don't allow their kids to practice yoga even if it is uh, taught in schools in the name of health um, whether or not we, we are going to get health benefits out of yoga they don't want to they don't want their kids to do yoga mainly because it is somewhat related to Hinduism but if you watch closely the kind of yoga they perform they are nothing more than physical exercise well it could involve uh, the breathing exercises as well but still it is exercise right how can some exercise be uh, related to any religion because some religions perform their worship method as a part of yoga yoga but still they don't allow their kids to learn uh, the common yoga asanas now let's see what is yoga asana means what is yoga first of all because if you know the meaning then you will know for sure whether uh, what we are doing is right or not yoga means remembrance or union union with the divine that is what yoga stands for so do you think the kind of poses that we use will unite us with the divine is there any chance for that because you can do it for uh, you can do it with anything in your mind how can that be divine because uh, nowadays people even have created a yoga called tantric yoga which is uh, solely attached to sexuality how can something that sexual be divine and now people even call sex as something divine and since we love sex we love this definition as well but does it really mean yoga has something to do with sex or lust or any kind of such stimulation the answer is definitely no not only that uh, you can even coin this term yoga as just the opposite of sexuality or sex yes uh, in India they say the sannyas is created yoga think about it sannyasis are those who renounce their family they renounce sex life would they create yoga to enjoy sex or what so the meaning that 
uh, we believe yoga to be is definitely not the actual meaning of yoga yoga means uniting with god be one with god so how is that possible can we be one with god physically obviously not spiritually yeah maybe so how can we be in a united with god spiritually so for that we need to know about god and also there's a second word especially in hindi yoga asana what is asan what does that stand for asan means the chair that's it asan means just chair so the yoga that's performed while seated on chair is called yoga asana do you think the yoga asana poses they do uh, we can do do it while sitting on the chair obviously not then how can that be called yoga asana so they have changed the meaning of that asana into a pose but the actual meaning of that is just chair that's it so how can we perform yoga while sitting on chair so what is yoga yoga means um uniting with god can we not unite with god spiritually while sitting on chair it is possible right but i don't think any religion allow people to worship god while sitting on chair right in no religion that's the practice even in churches while they sit while listening to the sermon uh when they pray they will either stand up or they will kneel down so there is no question of sitting while praying to god then how can we combine with god while sitting on the chair but the meaning of yoga asana is just that so there should be something something that we have to interpret so true yoga asana means sitting on the chair and remembering god can we remember god while sitting on chair yes we can right but how can we remember god do we know how god looks like does any religion reveal that the answer is no up to date nobody knows how god looks like nobody knows who god is nobody knows um what his duty is then how can we remember god how can we forget ourselves in the memory of god we do not know whether he is lovable or he is uh, angry type because all religions if we go through it it just defines god as someone who is very angry then how can we call that god as an embodiment of love how can we call god is love when the religious scripture religious scriptures say the other way around so now we are going to see how to do the real yoga and before that you should know who created this yoga the yoga was indeed created by god himself but the yoga postures that we perform today they are all created by humans that's why they are not true that's why they are so confusing um so yoga was originally created by god himself it obviously means that god has come to earth and taught this yoga to humans right that is why we praise god it is because of this yoga that he taught that he is still praised so what is so special about this yoga <coughs> why do people do yoga first of all because they want to have good health right that's the basic uh, reason people take on yoga but how's that possible uh obviously what they are doing is just 
some kind of stretching exercises and breathing exercises will that solve all problems and another reason is they do yoga to calm their mind is it possible to calm your mind by doing breathing exercise or stretching exercise when you were loved ones lie dead in front of you is it possible for you to calm your mind is it possible for you to calm your mind when you are fired off from your work by doing any kind of yoga is that possible so when that cannot be achieved by the kind of yoga that we are doing these days how can you call that yoga is designed for achieving this purpose but the kind of yoga that i am going to teach you today is purely designed to calm your mind no matter what happens no matter who is dead in front of you no matter what happens uh, with this nature even if you have to witness the natural calamity right in front of your eyes your mind will stay as calm as it is when you are in a real calm place so that's the kind of magic this yoga is capable to create and that is what i'm going to share with you because this has been taught by god to us and we in turn are teaching you the same thing <coughs> so coming to the definition yoga asana means meditating with god while sitting on the chair and before that you should know how god looks like only then you can meditate on him right so that's the meditation meditation itself stands for remembering god but nowadays people uh, use the word so loosely to mean anything that we think of if you think of a girl for a long time then you say you are meditating on a girl but that's not the right term meditation is just only for god the word should be used only to refer to remembering god that's it since they do not know about god they use the word to everything else yoga asana is nothing but meditation it is the meditation it is the only meditation <coughs> so before that we have to remember god while sitting on the chair now the first question or the first word we use in this sentence is we and who is that we stands for who is that we or i who is that i does it refer to the physical thing that you see if you think this is i then you are wrong because uh what you see now that's going to change totally completely after 20 years and before 20 years it looked entirely different so i can't be something that changes frequently not only that it won't be here after certain years which means it will be destroyed am i a destroyable body am i a perishable body no nope. i exist always that is what all religions say right no religion say that we are perishable if we are perishable then there's no need to fear god there's no need to be good there's no need to do anything we can live as much as we want right so it obviously means there's something after death what exists after death is what i am what exists before i take this body is what i am what makes this body to behave as it is that is what i am and that is the soul well christians call this spirit so that's the soul that's the life energy that's me and you can't see that it doesn't mean it, it is not present as long as it is present this body can move can see can hear can speak 
the minute the life energy escapes out of this body this body can't do anything on its own so it is the soul that operates this body and i am that soul that operates this body i'm not this body you have to understand this first so that's the first step you have to realize that you are this soul and the second step well i accept that i'm a soul but where i am how do i look like is there any form or am i formless well the answer is you have a definite form and you have a permanent form it can never be changed it can never be destroyed and that form is a point of light it's the most tiny point of light you can't find anything tinier than the soul it's so tiny that is why we can't see it either through the naked eyes or through any scientific equipments that is why nobody knows anything about god Sci science uh, sorry knows anything about the soul even science do not know it it knows it exists but it doesn't have any other idea which is why they can't do anything for the soul all they can do is to the body even that is limited because science can't guarantee to save someone's life when he is very serious right they just can they just can try their best that's it so it is only by knowing about the soul we can change our life ever happy ever wealthy ever peaceful as long as we do not have any idea about the soul no matter what we do we can never be peaceful we can never be happy we can never be wealthy or else if you want to be wealthy you have to work really hard again what happens is you have to leave all the wealth here and you have to take another birth uh, which may be in a very poor family which means you have almost wasted all your life in earning the money that's not going to be of any use after your death so we've been fools all our life right so we have to know how to accumulate wealth health within the soul so that we can carry it birth after birth is that possible yes it is possible that is why yoga is created that is why yoga is created by god that is why he is pressed till death people say everybody is born equal is that true how can you call everybody is equal when somebody is white when somebody is black when somebody is poor when somebody is are uh, rich when somebody is uh, intelligent when somebody is mentally handicapped someone is physically handicapped how can you say that everybody is equal how can you say everybody is equal when nobody agrees with you when everybody has their own opinions how can you say that everybody is created equal as a matter of fact if you think god has created us yes he wants to create everybody equally but unfortunately we are not created equal so it is through this yoga god creates human beings you have to know what creation is because we have been uh, mesmerized to believe that creation was as per bible and quran but in reality it's not so as sciences this world exists eternally there was uh, but even science didn't know that because science um, does its research based on bible belief that is there was nothing in the beginning then it came the difference between bible and science is just bible says god created the world science says the world was automatically created <laughs> so there's no big difference they just removed god that's it but in reality it is true god created this world and it is also true that this world exists eternally but here 
the definition of creation is entirely different from what we have been believing so far because there is no such creation like something come out of nothing that is impossible actually Pasteur, Louis Pasteur proved that right <coughs> Louis Pasteur proved that it is impossible for a living thing to come out of non-living thing when that is impossible how can the world comes out of nothing think of that yes the soul is a point of light it shines like a star it is in between the eyebrows which is why in India people uh, wear bindis here um, so that is where we exist we are the soul that exists as a point of light in between the eyebrows and that is where it is seated the part between the eyebrows is the seat of soul that's where every soul is seated my soul is seated right here your soul is seated in between the eyebrows of you so that's the seat yoga asan that asan refers to so you have to sit there and think of God but as a matter of fact you are already seated there but you didn't realize it so here to sit there means you have to realize that you are sitting there because we have almost forgotten that uh, nobody knows that we are souls they may say soul but do they live as souls they do everything for their bodies not for the soul right so you have to realize yourself as a soul that is entirely different from this body it is you who operates this body as much as a driver operates a vehicle a driver is operating the car as he wishes it doesn't mean he is the car he is the one who operates the car similarly you can use the eye to see whatever you want but it is the soul that sees through the eyes it is the soul that listens through the ear it is the soul that speaks through the mouth and you are the soul but you are invisible because it's so tiny so you have to realize as a point of light you have to forget your body that's the first step of yoga this is the true yoga as taught by god just think of you as a point of light just forget that you have something called body just think of you as a point of light close your eyes and visualize as a point of light you are listening something it is the soul that listens open your eyes you are seeing something it is the soul that sees through the eyes you are thinking of something it is the soul that thinks it is the soul that performs everything or it is the soul that makes this body to perform something so in a way you can call soul as the master of this body and the body is the slave all five senses are just the slaves of the soul it should be like that but now since we have forgotten that we are souls we started considering ourselves as this body we become body conscious thereby we become slaves to the body and its senses and its sensual pleasures so we become slaves for lust anger greed attachment and ego these five vices exist both in men and women they are combinedly called the ten-headed Ravan this is the true Ravan there was no one like Ravan as mentioned in Ramayan so this is the truth this same Ravan is called Satan by Christians and Muslims and Maya by Hindus so we all have become slaves now and the purpose of God teaching this yoga to humans is to conquer this satan 
we have to conquer this maya we have to conquer the lust and the only way to do that is to do this yoga continuously without any break throughout this life god teaches us this yoga towards the end of the world towards the last hundred years before the destruction of the world before the destruction of the world world because in a way the world doesn't destroy at all it just gets renewed it will be renewed into the new world the golden aged world so that's going to happen anytime soon now we have understood that we are souls now we have to unite with god or we have to remember god we have to forget ourselves in the remembrance of god actually yoga doesn't mean to forget ourselves it is to forget the body yoga actually means to stay awake is to be very conscious of who you really are that is the soul it is the soul consciousness that is called yoga and the only way to make soul conscious permanent is to remember god repeatedly because when you now we have to know about god to remember him right so for that you have to have this short introduction about the knowledge given directly by god god says it is here the world of souls that we souls existed before taking birth on earth so it is in this soul world god also exist actually he is also a soul that is why he is called supreme soul param atma soul means atma in hindi supreme means param so god is called paramatma supreme soul and that god's name is god shiva in hinduism and that same god is called allah by muslims that same god is called the heavenly father by christians even jesus christ called him the father and he is the only god everybody else is humans everybody else is his children whether it is shri krishna whether it is jesus christ whether it is lord buddha everybody else is his children they are not god god is always one and his name is god shiva now we know that god is also a soul he also shines like a tiny star and this place is called the supreme abode that is parandamam it is also called paralogam parlok by christians this is where god dwells all the time only difference between god and we souls is we take birth we enter this birth and death cycle god doesn't he stays out of this cycle so that is also mentioned in shrimad bhagavad gita <coughs> then when we first enter this time cycle this is a 5000 year time cycle called kalpa when we first enter this cycle it was heaven in the beginning so the world will be filled with uh, golden and other precious ornaments and we were very rich very healthy very peaceful very blissful in the beginning and now we know how god looks like right he is also a point of light so how to remember god we have to remember him as a point of light before that we have to be seated right here in between the eyebrows that is we have to realize we have to be conscious of who we are before remembering god because it is the soul that remembers god not this body and it is the soul that's going to get the benefit from god what is that benefit your past sins of your past births are going to be washed off permanently 
this is the only way to wash your, your sins and only when your sins get burnt or washed off only then you will be rid of um, diseases and everything that's causing you pain whether it is your neighbors it is uh, the natural calamities or the old age problems anything will be <coughs> you can come out of anything that causes pain only through this yoga and you have to do this yoga there is no other way out at all because god teaches this towards the end of kali yoga or the world world and this is called sangam yoga that's that that means where souls and the supreme soul meet <coughs> the supreme soul or god he is the father of all souls because he reveals this truth and gives us uh, the way he shows us the path to enter heaven so the world will be heaven for the first 2500 years and we will be deities and hindus worship the statues of just us because we were once so pure that's why we are being worshiped even now but we are not god you, you know it right so after the completion of first 2500 years we enter hell which means this world itself is converted to hell after the completion of first 2500 years so what happens during this conversion is in heaven we would be soul conscious we wouldn't consider ourselves to be this perishable body instead we would consider ourselves to be this imperishable soul but in heaven we forget the fact that we are souls instead we would uh, wrongly consider ourselves to be this perishable body because of which we fall for lust anger greed attachment and ego so these five vices are commonly called satan so this and the last 2500 years is the kingdom of satan and everybody calls it without even knowing the meaning of it and god comes in the last 100 years of the kingdom of satan or the kingdom of maya or raven and he teaches us the way to escape from the grasp of maya that is we have to conquer lust greed attachment ego because only these five vices are the reasons that you are suffering when you overpower them then you will be free from all sorts of sufferings and the only way out is to consider yourselves as souls and to think of god as much as you can that's the only way <coughs> so what do you get out of this first uh, what happens when uh, when you continuously think of god is you will start experiencing immense happiness and peacefulness and blissfulness this itself will cure all sorts of diseases because there's no greater tonic than happiness that's what god reveals it is through happiness that all you will this is us get cured just think for instance if you don't fall for lust if you don't get angry do you think your pressure level will increase at all because your pressure increases you get all sorts of diseases right when you can maintain your pressure constant obviously you are not going to get any disease and the outstanding benefit of this yoga is not only that you are going to be cured of all diseases in this world but you will be getting rid of all sorts of diseases for the next 21 births that you are going to take in heaven yes there the life span will be very long yeah the average life span will be 150 years even after that you can't call that a death because since you were soul conscious you uh, it would the death would be just like you changing another cloth 
you will be getting rid of this old cloth that is the old body and uh, you'll be taking a new body that is what we call death now and that causes immense pain for us because we are so attached to this body but God says remove your attachment from everything everybody including your own body because that's not you anyway you are going to get rid of it one day or another so intelligent people will get rid of it mentally right now so that's what God says as much as you think of God you will get the power to remove the attachment from this body and from all the worldly things and from all the all the worldly pleasures the only pleasure you derive now is by remembering God and compared to that pleasure all sorts of pleasures that we enjoy in this kingdom of Maya they are just nothing but you have to put some effort to taste that pleasure to taste the divine pleasure by thinking of that divine being God so this is the true yoga and it is only through this yoga all your past sins will be burnt by sin we mean these five vices because uh, we have been committing sin after sin in our previous births only by indulging in these five vices so we tend to indulge in more and more sin because the souls take these characters from our past births so the only way to remove that is to think of God very lovingly and the only way to think of God very lovingly is to listen to God and to understand him correctly uh, we can't uh, think of God with love by reading the religious scriptures because they uh, actually define God to be someone who is very cruel in nature no God is not that God is not the one who punishes us God is the one who saves us from punishment who shows the path to he sh who shows the right path so that we can follow that and save ourselves from the punishments yes it is true that we are sin right from our birth because we or carrying our sins from our past births but the religions like the Christianity and Islam uh, they don't believe in the next birth so but they can't explain how we are sent from our birth because it is only them who says that we are sent right from our birth if we are born out of sex how can we be called the sinner because it is our parents who have sinned right so we are sinners from our birth because we have sinned in our past birth so this is the knowledge of god and this is the only truth this is the true yoga sana this yoga is also called shiv yoga or raj yoga or whatever you want to call it this is the only yoga this is taught directly by god which is why humans are attracted towards this yoga or else they would be attracted towards other sorts of physical exercises right so people do not know how to think of god so they started to concentrate on breathe on the body part on the imaginary chakras they are not yoga so now god himself revealed how he looks like so now we have to think of god that's it so to understand god correctly you have to listen to god how can we listen to god does god speak anywhere yes he is speaking he is speaking through an old man called brahma in the last 100 years and you can get his teachings by joining in the nearest raj yoga meditation center that is spread across the globe it's uh, present almost in all countries uh, if you want to know the address of the raj yoga meditation center in your area in your country then you can whatsapp me at this number plus nine one nine eight nine four six seven one seven four three so this is the truth this is the only truth that's going to save you from all the future punishments that's the consequence of your past sins 
so this is the only way to wash out your sins because it is you who sinned so it is you who should work your way out of it but God shows the way nothing else you have to put the effort path is God's effort is yours so all the best for that um, please share this with your friends so that they can be benefited as well uh, and please subscribe to this channel to get uh, many more videos with uh, revealing with many more revelations of God true revelations of God not the revelations as mentioned in the religious scriptures that was written by humans but what whatever we speak it is given directly by God not through any messengers uh, if you want to call a true messenger it is nothing more than us because it is we who is getting message directly from God and we are giving it to you you can listen to God directly uh, rush to the nearest Raja Yoga meditation center so that you can listen directly from God thank you all for watching have a nice day